Okay, so we are uh, live, we are recording. So welcome everybody, including the ones on YouTube who cannot attend the live sessions. So welcome to part 4B. So this part should be the end of uh, our review of naive set theory. So by the end of it, the remaining few notions that we have to cover today, uh, you will have everything you need from um, set theoretic point of view to get started with topology. So we will start with topology in the next uh, lecture. I originally, I initially, I had the idea of possibly doing something on like a, a measure, like sigma algebra stuff, but I will leave that because we are covering measure theory in the next in the next module anyway. Um, it doesn't um, it doesn't um, it doesn't hurt us to just jump in straight into topology, just given the time. Okay, so um, just to recap, um, it is really very important that before you you uh, for those watching on YouTube in particular, uh, before attending uh, a new session, you know, make sure that you review the previous session, you know, um, to make things easier because these things are built on top of each other. So in the last session, we covered the notion of index sets and also um, uh, the notion of index family of sets. So we have a family of sets, you know, that we can index. And I guess you kind of understood the notion of indexing is basically uh, an abstract um, um, notion of uh, what we call like labeling, right? When you label things, you know, when you label objects, for instance, you know. So, yeah. So I hope you were able to go through the problems. If not, then I would uh, encourage you to revisit uh, the notions again and go through the uh, the homework um, assignments um, in order to feel comfortable because otherwise it will be very, very hard um, to just follow up. As I said, you know, these things are built on top of each other. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, the first thing is actually uh, we'll generalize the notion of a Cartesian product to um, an arbitrary, um, let's say, a countable uh, a collection of uh, sets. Uh, last time we uh, we only defined Cartesian product with uh, two sets. What if we have three, four, five, <laughs> or one billion, one one trillion of sets, and you want to take Cartesian product of them? You know. So um, this year will make it easier to not go even more abstract where the indexing <laughs> can be, you know, arbitrary, you know, so the, 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 pro the Cartesian product can be a little bit more abstract, but for practice, this is what we need. So consider uh, this indexed family of known empty sets, okay, with the indexing uh, set i going from one to say k for some very, imagine very, very large k, okay. So the Cartesian product is basically uh, defined like this. So it's the n tuples, you know, where each entry belong to the to the thing to one of the sets. So that's it. Um, this is this is less abstract. Is more in practice. This is actually what we need, <laughs> you know, because you deal with the countable spaces in your in your construction. Say, for example, you have a topological space, uh, a collection of topological spaces. Uh, you know, maybe five or four or six or whatever. You know, you 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 take their Cartesian product, and generally this is um, also a topological space. So, in other words, uh, the Cartesian products, um, the constructions, um, uh, you can construct. Uh, say, for example, if you add structure to the sets. At the moment, we are not adding structure to the sets. We are just saying, you know, sets are sets, right? <laughs> um, but once you start adding structure, like uh, you know. Uh, topological structure, you know, uh, linear structure, and so on. Um, when you take the Cartesian product of those, you will, uh, you can still, and uh, those, the, the resulting Cartesian uh, product can be uh, equipped with the underlying structures that you, you are considering, okay? Um, so as I was saying, the Cartesian product of uh, um, two topological spaces tend to be uh, topological space as well, the same with manifold. Uh, vector spaces and so on. And here's uh, an exercise. I really encourage you to try to do this so you can understand, uh, you know, there will be some things here that uh, are uh, to try to catch you up, but it doesn't matter. So let's, uh, let's suppose you have two family of index uh, set with the indexing, first index uh, going from one to M, the other one um, going from one to N. 
sort of thing, it's challenges for you to try to prove or disprove this to see whether the Cartesian product holds uh, these identities here uh, hold under the Cartesian product if it's true. Um, so that's it. Um, now, before we go to um, the other notion that uh, I wanted to cover today, and we will cover today, is the axiom of choice. <laughs> this is a very, originally when this was uh, created, this was a very contentious uh, uh, axiom in, in mathematics, as you will see in a minute. <laughs> but before that, let me give you a bit of uh, intuition, because you know, as always in mathematics, things don't, don't just show up randomly. <laughs> There's always a reason. There is a reason for, you know, uh, a particular mathematician to come up with uh, a specific construction, uh, uh, some specific notion, you know. So there is always a, back, a background story, okay? Uh, let me try to make it uh, as easy as possible. Suppose we have a collection of non-empty non sets, okay? So that's the first requirement. They have to, the sets have to be non-empty. Uh, wouldn't it be nice uh, if we can form a new set, okay, in a such a way that we can pick the resulting, the new sets has an element from each of the sets, exactly one element, okay? And obviously this is a countable thing. What if we can, you know, <laughs> uh, talk about, you know, uh, um, uh, arbitrary uh, collection of sets, you know, where the indexing can be, say, for example, even an uncountable thing. How would you do this construction? I guess you you already start to see how the difficulties of this. <laughs> um, how would you do this? Okay, so this is basically, um, in a nutshell, the simplest way I could uh, come up <laughs> to give you some sort of a naive intuition of the reason, if if you will, uh, of uh, the axiom of choice. So let's go. Uh, to the axiom of choice. Before that, obviously, we need something called choice function, okay? So, a choice function is basically giving a collection of indexed um, family of non-empty sets, okay? So, each of the um, each of the sets are non-empty, okay? Um, is a map, a choice is a map that goes from that family of index set to the union over the family, okay? And this is called a choice if, <laughs> when you pick uh, any element of the family, the resulting image of the of the of the thing uh, when you apply the function uh, belongs to the to the to the to, to, to the member, okay? So f of uh, i um, a i equals a i. Okay, for all AI in the family. Okay, so this is a choice. Let me just look at this uh, um, abstract definition later with the with care, but it actually helps if we can have a bit of uh, intuition um, in here to make it like a concrete example. So um, I will take this first example. Let's say um, I just look at before while I was preparing the slides. According to United Nations, <laughs> there are 195. Um, uh, countries in the world, independent nations, okay? Um, so I'm assuming United Nations is correct, so let's do that. So let's make our index i to go from 1 to 195, meaning that it covers all the independent nations that United Nations uh, consider, okay? So we can construct the family, C, uh, this C, where each uh, member is actually a country made of all of its cities, okay? So for example, let's say, uh, A1, uh, be the United States, okay? Um, I pick, uh, maybe I should uh, put the UK, but uh, yeah, uh, United, uh, you are a superpower, <laughs> number one superpower, so let's uh, <laughs> let's put uh, uh, A1 to be United States. Then A1, um, as for this uh, construction definition, A1 is made of all the cities in the US, okay? Okay, so another thing is according to the definition then, the collection, this uh, um, this union over all the, the 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 members of the family. This should yield all the cities in the in the world, correct? In, right? Because uh, this each each uh, each member of the collection is a, is is a country made of its uh, the the collection of all of it, its cities. So if you take the union of all the all the um, countries, 
you should have the resulting set should be a set containing all the cities in the world okay so we can then define this this map f that goes from the family uh to the union okay so we can make uh, this for example f uh, of uh, ai equals the capital of the uh, of, of uh, ai okay um so for example f of the united states because a1 is united states so f of one would be uh, washington dc i believe that's your capital right <laughs> so this is a choice function right does anyone have any 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 problem with this that this is a choice fun function okay so okay so no uh, i see thumbs up so that means uh <laughs> everything okay you agree the choice function this well, is actually washington is it is spelled that way huh washington there's washington a typo yeah I, I i noticed that there is a typo so uh, sorry for in that in case so, you uh, want that's okay <laughs> expect <laughs> washing your gonna... dishes yeah yeah so FYI. i mean with all the politics okay. going on now so <laughs> okay back <laughs> <joke>. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I apologize to um to to my american friends for misspelling your capital washington dc <laughs> um but yeah I, that's why i should have uh, stick to the uk and then uh, this would be london it's much more easier <laughs> but i will correct the slides okay so this is actually very uh very easy to to see to convey the idea of the choice functions you know so and the other one this is uh, the popular one <laughs> um uh, you know suppose the these are all the pairs of shoes that have been made over the past uh, three centuries you know i'm just choosing three centuries because why not <laughs> you know so that means that the union is uh the collection of all pairs of shoes made over the past three centuries right <laughs> yeah uh, similar to the case of um example one um this i claim this is a choice function uh, something that takes uh, any pair of shoes assigns it to the to the, any any pair assign assign it to the thing left the left pair of it this is also uh, a choice function okay so that's it so axiom of choice is uh, sorry this is a choice function yeah so you know how to construct a choice function um a choice function if it exists which uh, the axiom of choice that you will see it will this is exactly the at the heart of the axiom of choice is to guarantee the existence of this okay um so you have a family of indexed non-empty sets okay remember they have to be non-empty and you know you pick a map from the family itself to the union of the uh, the members so the the uh, the choice has this property of taking um um each member of the collection um belongs to itself the image sorry the the function f f of each member of the collection belongs uh, happens to be in, in, in a member of the of the thing of the collection so that's it that's the choice function and just go through this uh, in particular this example here and um, you will see uh, you'll have an intuition intuition and you can obviously generalize this you know uh, obviously uh, the number of countries in the world is finite <laughs> but you know you can easily see where this could uh, could could go now let's go to the important thing so the axiom of choice <laughs> it goes like this there are different ways of actually stating it i'm going to state it here this way because we already you know stated the uh, the definition of uh, of choice function so for any collection of index family of non empty sets there is a choice function okay f that goes from the family to the union of the the the, the collection okay so basically the reason why this action has been contentious <laughs> is the lack of uh you know um uh constructive behind it like you you don't you, you, mathematicians were very uncomfortable that you know if you say something is this you need to be able to construct it you know you need to be able to show it not just you know assume it exists you know but <laughs> this is the thing you know many people tried actually to do it but you know um without success so you know um over time it, it's been taken you know much more you know like a appeal <laughs> to mathematicians um that you know it, it is indeed you know better off taking as an axiom you know it guarantees you that you know um a choice function always exists so you don't even need to bother to construct it so it's there 
Um, there are different ways. Uh, if you look at the textbook of defining the axiom of choice, you know, one alternative, this is equivalent also, that the Cartesian product of any collection of non-empty sets is non-empty. This is also an alternative way. These two are, are equivalent. There are so many diff equivalent ways of uh, um, um, stating the axiom of choice, but I think this one is much more straightforward, much more intuitive through the choice function itself. So the axiom of choice is really <laughs> omnipresent in anything that has been built on top of set theory, you know, which is pretty much a lot, uh, most of the <laughs> all the branches of uh, modern mathematics, you know, from analysis to linear algebra, you know, for, for example, those of you just speaking about linear algebra, you know, when you have vector spaces, <laughs> you know, you want the vector spaces to have a basis. Okay, well, the proof that actually uh, um, tells us that there is a basis, any vector space has a basis, actually makes you, without the axiom of choice, it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be possible. So it, it really has, you know, um, um, provided the mathematicians with, uh, with, you know, with very convenient <laughs> way of, you know, making constructions, basically, establishing, you know, proofs that rely on arbitrary choices um, of general statements, you know. So it is contentious, in it, it was contentious initially. Um, nowadays, you know, mathematicians, especially young generations, you know, they, this is all things that we take for granted, you know, nobody questions it. <laughs> um um don't, obviously there are people working on the foundations of mathematics still thinking about these things but uh, a working mathematician a practice a practitioner you know in algebra in other topics they they don't they don't talk about these things um, they just take it uh, for granted so that's it anyone wants to make any comment about the axiom of choice before i move on yeah what 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 if the collection is in a collection of Shoes, yeah, but is a collection of socks, yeah. Well, because it? the shoes have a, a left and a right, but the socks don't. So how do you know which one to choose? Yeah, that's the that's 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 the thing. This is the thing. <laughs> um, well, according to the axiom of choice, is that there is a choice function. This is actually a good a good uh, example to where you know the the points of contention especially when you are coming up with concrete examples and these things uh, that's right yeah so but the action of Shay said it exists there is a choice function that does this for you <laughs> whether you can construct it or not it doesn't it's it's uh, according to the action of choice it's you don't actually need to bother but it does exist yeah so, yeah, it's a good, 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 good point. This actually shows uh, what other mathematicians perceived the axiom of choice as, 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 as you know, uh, I won't say nonsense, but like <laughs> the weaknesses of it, you know. <laughs> but um, again, if you take it as a thing, in principle, there is a, a choice function, you know. Um, yeah, so, okay. So that's it. That's the axiom of choice. This is a very important uh, thing. You know, you will come, uh, especially uh, as we go towards, there will be a theorem. I will try to remember, uh, remind us anytime we come to a theorem that um, uh, the underpinning of it is the axiom of choice, just for you guys to see um, how important it is, you know. But it is a very important axiom. And also, as I, you know, we were, it's it's a very contentious, it, it was a very contentious um, um a thing a issue in the, the thing in, in in the foundations of mathematics when um it was first formulated i think uh george might be the historian here to remember me uh was it zermelo who proposed the axiom of choice i think i think it was zermelo yes that was zermelo yeah and yeah. zermelo yeah that's why the axiomatic system then afterwards uh it used to be zermelo frankel it's now called Zermelo Frankel plus the axiom of choice, uh, which is basically ZFC. So when you hear ZFC axiomatic system, it means Zermelo Frankel uh, and the axiom of choice. Yeah, so you can consider Zermelo Frankel axiomatic system without the axiom of choice. People do that. But when you see ZFC, it means that the Zermelo Frankel plus axiom of choice. Um, uh, that the axiomatic system that you are you, you are um, um, 
you are um, uh, considering. Yeah, Barry makes a good point that it, it you should always be clear about when you're using it, wh wh where it comes into your proof. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. And in, in mathematics, that's why in, in a lot of uh, test books or even papers, some people used to now nowadays it's like taken for granted, like it's like a, you know people it's obvious there, <laughs> but. Uh, um, a very i used to see a lot of statements at the beginning to say you know we are uh, going under you know we are using a zfc you know for example you know that tells you that you know um throughout the paper or the book and these things you know it's actually zfc axiomatic system set theory axiomatic system that has been under underpinning whatever being uh, written um so yeah but some people are even state to say in the proofs themselves, you know, according to the axiom of choice, we do this and these things. Or another uh, another thing, um, uh, extension of it, which is the Zorn, the Zorn lemma, for instance. You know, people state all all of that. Say, oh, according to Zorn lemma, you know, this and that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zorn's lemma is one of those things that people really like to have. But it can also be shown that you can assume Zorn's lemma as an axiom, and then choice becomes a consequence of Zorn's lemma. Yeah, There's a correct. few of these things in different areas. Yeah. Thank you, George. Well, okay, so let me just. Uh, is there anything else on this before I go to the um, the next thing? There's a couple more questions from Barry and Mohammed Reza. Okay, Barry's... can we come back to this just to make okay, it sure. yeah, just to make the the thing the uh, YouTube uh, people a little uh, more compressed, um, and I will come back to this. Okay. Okay, so the other thing that you need um, to know before we get to topology uh, is the notion of power set. Okay, so uh, let X be a non empty set. So the power set of X, which is normally denoted like this, uh, this calligraph P of X, is defined as the set of all subsets of X. Okay, uh, so that's it. That's the power set. Um, obviously, um, every set is a subset of itself then it's there and also from the beginning um you know that the empty set is a subset of any set so therefore <laughs> the power set uh, of any set must contain the empty set as well correct um so his uh, another comment i would say all these things that we've been um, you know uh, playing around with like indexing family of sets you know in practice <laughs> what actually is happening is uh, you will see this in topology the in the families that you are considering are actually indexed a family of some um, um power set of a set okay um so this is why it's important to understand this notion of uh, of uh, power set because a lot of constructions in topology and 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 and, and so on the indexing family are actually um a sub collection uh, on a uh, of a power uh, a power set of some 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 set okay so it's very important to um understand this notion so here's a toy example uh, suppose x is a b uh, then the subsets of x are obviously the empty set x itself you know the singleton a um i think i forgot here uh, singleton b so there's a typo here <laughs> singleton b and uh, and and yeah this is a repeat actually there's a typo here but it doesn't matter you can see the power uh, the power set is written correctly here okay so um the power set is empty set the the set itself singleton a and singleton b yeah so here is uh, i will correct this there's a typo here okay now, here's a proposition that I would like you to try on the thing as a homework. If X is a finite set with cardinality K, remember cardinality meaning the number of elements of, uh, of, of the set, then the power set has cardinality two to the K, okay? I guess you can already see here the, the example. 
uh, that's the thing because you know this has cardinality to this set and then this one has cardinality four right two to the to the k so and here's a theorem um this is called cantors i'm stating there are different ways of stating this as well um there's one popular one is through a function to say there's no budget uh, i won't do that i think this is much more uh, uh, direct so let x be a set any set it doesn't matter whether it's uh, you know uh, finite or infinite this tells you that uh, the cardinality of the set is less than the cardinality of the power power set uh, so this is basically telling you that the, <laughs> the cardinality uh, of the set is always uh, smaller than the cardinality of the power set this is like intuitive right <laughs> it looks like it you know uh, but you know proving this is actually uh, um um not as uh, trivial as you might might think as 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 you are seeing in set theory sometimes you know simple statements <laughs> are very hard to like you know there's a hard work to proving very simple statements but i will be um you will be pleased to know that uh, we will release a video um as part of this uh this lecture um apart from this uh, session i will release this there, there's a, a video where we will um uh you will see the a proof of the diagonal uh, cantor's diagonal proof the one that uh, um basically shows um that the reals are not uh, countable and also the theorem for the power set will will show up there so that's it in terms of the power set i will leave you these uh, extra homework exercises uh, some of them are made up to catch you up, so pay attention, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, yeah. Uh, in particular, this one, the problem H, <laughs> uh, it would be nice if you can try to do this. If not, uh, don't worry. Um, if you watch the video, perhaps uh, uh, you will be able to, uh, um, to, to maybe understand this or prove it. If not, maybe we can release a proof of this uh, as well to make it more explicit, yeah. Okay, so that's it for everyone on YouTube. Well done. So this concludes the naive set theory section of this boot camp. Um, the next step for us is to start with the topology. Okay, so well done to all of you, you know, for taking all these, um, especially those of you who have been very consistent in, you know, tackling the problems, you know, submitting um, your work, you know. Uh, you will see as we get to topology, this will pay off, you know, because a lot of all the uh, the language of set theory, the stuff, the notions that you went through with, you know, the abstraction that you have to, this will all be um, um, helpful uh, in your uh, taking of topology. Yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't had the time or for some other reason, and this thing, I really encourage you to take the time to review everything. Uh, before you show up on the thing on the topology um, uh, session, uh, which is the next, uh, which is our next session, because otherwise it will be very abstract and you will have difficulties. <laughs> I can, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but <laughs> if you struggle with what we've been covering so far, you know, indexing and all these things, you know, power sets and and so on, uh, you will struggle. You will definitely struggle with the, with the technical topology. So I do encourage you to. Um, review, take an opportunity, and use the channels. You know to go and uh, and 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 you know ask for help and uh, interact with others. Um, I'll be sending. We'll um, uh, we'll um, Jackie, our community manager, will be sending a survey. Uh, now that we ended this part, um, this section, just to help me understand a bit about you know how has it been in terms of experience for you, so I can have a feedback and you know uh try my best to adjust in order to make uh, the learning experience better for you so please um once you receive the survey uh which will be sent i believe later today or something uh but please complete it because it will give me a feedback um and give us a feedback so we can i can try my best to you know uh, make things easier for you as we go through these uh, remaining uh sections of this module so I'll stop sharing now. So for those on YouTube, um, I'll see you next time. And I will stop sharing so we can have a discussion or follow up or any other questions from the people attending here, just to make the video less. All right. So I'm going to stop recording.